My father was raised in Honduras and uh, pretty close to this village where we're working. I met the mayor of the town and explained to him that I would like to work with students on a project there in Honduras. I knew that we were starting this humanitarian engineering program and I wanted to get involved. It turned out that these people were displaced by uh, Hurricane Mitch in 1998. Hurricane Mitch dumped probably a half a meter of water in about 24 hours, which washed people out to sea and killed something like 18,000 people. And so a lot of the people that were living in the lower lying areas were given land by the government to move up into some hills uh, called Colinas de Suiza. Pues fue una situación bastante dolorosa, digamos, porque hubieron pérdidas humanas, ¿verdad? No, no es mi caso, ¿verdad? Pero sí la mayoría de las familias hondureñas perdieron sus familiares. Nosotros pues solo perdimos cosas materiales que gracias a Dios pues poquito a poco nos hemos ido recuperando. Unfortunately, there was there were no services associated with these this land. There was no water there. There was no sanitation, no electricity, nothing. Uh, just a piece of land, and the people would have to carve a little place out and build a house uh, out of whatever they could find. So we went there to evaluate the problems and to try and understand uh, what it was that the people needed. Because the community, Colinas de Suiza, is from refugees from Hurricane Mitch, they never really planned out how they would get their water when they just settled there. So currently, trucks have to come and deliver the water that they use. So all the potable water is either collected from rain, and that's a very small part, or it's delivered by these big trucks that just go around. And we saw them when actually we were working there. That's what the people have to use to drink and wash with and just wash their dishes with. Another issue with the trucks is the water that they get from it is pretty expensive. The average person in Colinas de Suiza makes about $8 a day. Water for a week is about $20. So as you can imagine, a small family, that's a significant portion of their income just for clean water to use. It, you could see how they use their water and um, actually how much they had. We, right before lunch every day, we'd go to the back of their yard where they had pigs and chickens and things like that, and you can see their water supply, and it's just pretty much a large concrete tub in a way. And just to wash your hands, you have to go and scoop out the water from the tub. Pretty different from how we do it, and it really puts it into perspective how much water you use just to wash your hands. Our project will deliver water to them and they'll be able to use it anytime they want and it'll be just a much better system and hopefully with that they can improve sanitation and just the basic standard of living that they have there. The municipality is in control of the aquifer. They already have two existing wells surrounding this village we're working in. The mayor is working with the director of sanitation and water and they've drilled a well and will provide a pump. Each family within the village is contributing $100 to offset the cost of the water tank. And $100 is about two weeks salary for each working person in the village. It was really amazing to see how much the locals actually wanted to help. And Really, the actual people in the houses did a lot of the just groundwork. And whether it was people digging with pickaxes or shovels, uh, kids carrying the pipe to where it needs to go, uh, it was pretty amazing to see the actual community come together. And it was cool to see that involvement and that kind of ownership of the project. Now, once the community has this water they can use, they're most likely going to use more. And then what are you going to do with the wastewater? So, 
that's what we're trying to address with the second phase. And so really what we're going to do is use something called an eco toilet or it's just a composting pit latrine more or less. To do that, we've chosen five families. So we're going to try it with those five families who volunteered and they'll be kind of the show families and the test families and um, we can adjust our design depending on their needs or their wants um, and really just see if it's going to be something that is really useful for the community and something that will be accepted. The worst thing that we could do is you know, design a system for them and say here use this but it's not compatible with their lifestyles and their needs. It's a clean, um, renewable and sustainable solution the community can use to really try to solve some of their water issues and their sanitation issues. When we bring the water to the people and they're going to have personal taps for each family, it's statistically shown that they're going to sh use probably three times as much water and we like to reuse that water, like gray water from laundry and dishes and stuff like that, into irrigating for their gardens. But because the, the soil has such a high content of clay, it's potential that there could be landslides or movement of the property or you know, problems. We're looking at possible ways of fixing it like reinforcing the ground around it or doing like raised flower beds. There's a lot still to, to think about. One of the most memorable parts of the trip for me was actually all the children in the village and there were a lot of them all over from probably about six years old to 12 and they just kind of come in hordes. It just really for me added a human face to the project because you know we look at the charts and the plans and a lot of the technical things but it's easy to forget you know actually what you're doing the project for. Growing up in a village they will now have water which will allow the families to put more of their income to education. So hopefully these kids can get better jobs later on in life and support a better family. Um, because of this water system. The children really are the future of that village and I think they'll stay there and can really make you know, a community out of it and a home that's sustainable in the future. Eh, la visión nuestra es que nuestra comunidad crezca eh, sanamente, que crezcan nuestros hijos pues ya con un futuro mejor. Este proyecto que ustedes nos están regalando viene a engrandecer Viene engalanar este pueblo de colinas de Suiza. Instead of just becoming this place where people just refugees and got to sit, it's going to become, you know, a community and a home for these people for a long time. So, um, seeing the kids really helped me put the project in perspective. Si es un de nosotros, mía pues para el futuro, es de que nuestra familia vivan dignamente pues, como como tiene que vivir eh, la mayoría de las personas. ¿Verdad? Porque eh, tenemos que vivir dignamente y ya con el agua, pues, viviríamos felices. My major goals with doing the humanitarian is to get my students involved and hopefully influence them for the rest of their lives. And, and I think we've been pretty successful of that. After the trip and the experience that I had down there, I'm really interested in finding a career that allows me to have a month vacation every year to, to work with Engineers Without Borders or some other organization where I can go and do humanitarian work overseas.